Hi, I'm Nate Adams, and today I'm going to review the eGauge 3000 energy monitor. So uh, you might want to take a look at uh, my blog about this, where I compare the sense to the curb to this eGauge 3000. Um, and uh, there's a video that directly compares all of them uh, right here, which you can also find on this YouTube channel. So uh, uh, this is one project in particular. So this is the Hiram College Treehouse, uh, which was a deep energy retrofit that was done about three years ago now. And uh, I've spent a lot of time in the building and played with it and learned this uh, uh, e-gauge pretty well. So originally, though, uh, it was installed incorrectly. So there were a bunch of clamps that were done backwards. Uh, so rather than showing that a circuit was using power, it was showing that it was producing power. And that actually made the information and the data from this utterly useless. So uh, in May of 2016, uh, I called eGauge and they were really helpful at getting uh, that fixed up. And now the data is good coming out of the system, which is really nice to know. Uh, so uh, anyway, in the... Uh, review here, I talk about five different things that matter uh, after playing with three different uh, energy monitors for a fairly uh, long amount of time. So I've got uh, over a year with all these. So ease of install is really important to me. And the E-Gauge is just okay at that. Uh, all of the, the type that has individual clamps uh, are tricky. Uh, so uh, this is my little photo album and you can see how much stuff is going on inside of the electric box where this is installed and this only has I believe 12 clamps uh, for it, 12 CT clamps uh, so this is where the e-gauge uh, lives and then all the wires jump over to the main box and pull data from it uh, so th this takes a little time to install so don't think you're going to do this in an hour. It's probably going to be more. And then you'll likely have to go collect data for a little bit, figure out what you goofed up, and then go and reverse the polarities. Or uh, you may decide you want to monitor something else. For instance, in this house, they're monitoring the stove. Uh, but the stove is almost never used. So I would much rather be monitoring another circuit. But that wasn't my call in this case. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, plan on it taking some time to put in. The second thing is app quality, which we're going to be looking at. It's uh, pretty good for this. It's kind of old school, uh, but uh, it does have some nice little features. There is odometer versus speedometer, which this does quite well. So in your car, the odometer is how many miles have you driven. The speedometer is how fast are you going at any given moment. Uh, and for an energy monitor, you want to understand both. So you want to know how much a uh, building is using at any given moment so that you can understand when something is on that you might not want on. And if you're trying to figure out where a power hog is, uh, the speedometer function is really important. But the odometer function, how many miles you've driven or how much energy has been used, is also very important. Uh, and eGauge does very well on both of these, frankly. Um, uh, I've come to like this device quite a bit. Uh, the fourth thing that you want to pay attention to is data export, and eGauge hands down has the best data export. Just There's just no arguing that fact. Uh, and then reverse polarities where you uh, clamp one of the CT clamps on backwards, and it shows uh, uh, that the power is reversed. That is an issue with this, as I just discussed. So let's take a look at what the uh, the app looks like for this. So eGauge only has a web app, but one nice thing is uh, this uh, web address up here, anybody can see this. So if you are putting this in for uh, a building and you want to have transparency, this is a wonderful tool because you have a web address where everybody can go. So right now, if you want to go take a look at what's going on at the Hiram College Treehouse, go to egauge 13275egaugees um, and presto, you'll see the same thing that I'm looking at here. This is live on the web right now. Uh, so a couple of things to notice here. At the top, uh, in this blue box, uh, and also the green box, these are the odometers. 
Uh, so I can change this to whatever I want. Uh, so we'll switch this over to what the house has used in the last day, which is 62 kilowatt hours. Um, this is relatively high, by the way. So I have another client um, uh, who we did a different project on. Uh, and it'll be a little bit tricky to see, but his house since the beginning of the month has used uh, 600 kilowatt hours. Uh, and it's, that's not totally fair because this is looking back exactly 30 days, but it's close to 800 kilowatt hours is what his house has used, uh, a much less deep retrofit. And you can see the summary over the last 30 days uh, shows that this house has used about 1,530 uh, kilowatt hours. So it's breaking into megawatt hours when it goes over 1,000 kilowatt hours, uh, and it's used 200 bucks worth of energy. Uh, so th this house has been using quite a bit of juice, um, much more than I might have hoped for. Uh, but uh, this was before we do the full process that we do now, so there were some things that weren't ideal. Uh, and you can take a look at the 1900 case study on energysmartohio.com to find out a lot more about this building. So in any case, you can look in the last day uh, how much energy has been used and what did it cost. Uh, and uh, then when you scroll down, so this is one kind of funky issue with this. To get everything to show on the screen for eGage, you have to squash the screen which makes it a little bit harder to see, particularly for you as you're trying to watch this video. Uh, but you can get an idea of uh, what's going on. So this is the last 24 hours through here, and then you can see how much energy has been used. So it's been using upwards of 2200 uh, uh, watts uh, the whole time. So this is in kilowatts, how much it's been pulling. And then you can see this is the actual current usage you had about 2,800 watts. So uh, this means that the uh, three mini split, or actually four mini split heads in the building are pulling fairly consistently uh, to keep the house warm. It's not super cold today, but it's relatively cold. Uh, we're in the low 30s, maybe upper 20s in Cleveland right now. Uh, so, but it is nice that you can see what's going on. You can select whatever time period you want going back. Uh, so in the last six months, it's used, um, what is that, uh, 4,500 kilowatt hours. And if we go back an entire year, it's used 15,700 kilowatt hours. And this matches up to uh, the utility data I've been able to get from the college. So or it's close enough that I trust it. Um, and it, you can see in the summertime here, the consumption goes down quite a bit. So it doesn't take that much to air condition the building, but then it takes quite a bit of energy to heat the building. Uh, and uh, I'm going to make this bigger again so that it's easier to see. And I'll just scroll down. Uh, so this is looking over the last year. And uh, you can select with eGage which circuit you're monitoring and see what's going on. So the big thing for this that's sucking a lot of juice, well, there's, there's two different things. Uh, one is the, uh, this is a circuit with the mini splits. So you can see this dotted red line. That's how much the uh, mini split heat pumps are using throughout the year. And then the other big user is uh, uh, the hot water heater, which this house has a radiant floor in the basement, which probably wasn't the best idea. I would have preferred to just do another mini split down there. Uh, but uh, uh, it is what it is. And uh, you can see that it uses quite a bit of power through uh, the winter time uh, because there's no heat in the basements and not a great deal of heat on the first floor of uh, this house. So uh, it lets you break that down. The bad part is uh, where Curb has a really, really nice chart for this where you can see what's going on and they're color coded. If I want to look at two different things simultaneously, uh, see, I just get uh, a bunch of dotted red lines and now it's like which one's which I don't remember 
uh, this is where uh, this device falls down uh, a fair amount. Uh, so you can really only look at one item at a time. Uh, just like all the monitors, it'll it'll let you know like there's power generated, energy to grid. So uh, it's planned to put a solar array on this building, and then they'll be able to track with the same device how much uh, power the solar array is producing at any given moment, uh, which is pretty cool. So that gives you a pretty good idea. This is a really simple screen that frankly tells you just about everything you want to know, uh, uh, but where this device really, really does well is in data export. Um, so you can export pretty much anything you want. So uh, you want to set the time period that you want to download uh, up here. And you can change this time period too. So if you want to change it to anything you want, you, you can just adjust this. Um, out of there. There we go. So you can just click set. And so this is the last year that I asked it for. Uh, and then you can export data. Uh, and here's where it's really cool. What interval do you want? So if you want every second for the last year, you can do that with this device. Uh, and that's that's pretty cool. So if you want to slice and dice data, you can get as much out of this thing as you want. Uh, uh, now, I'd probably say keep it more to a minute or maybe an hour, particularly when you're talking about a year's worth of data altogether. Um, but uh, once you have what you want, you can just click export, um, and you can also select you want uh, how much power was used, um, overall, so what's the usage in kilowatt hours, or do you want uh, how much energy was being used at any given moment? Um, and uh, then you just click export. Um, and it will, this, I asked it for every minute, so it'll take it a little bit of time. Uh, but uh, you will get uh, the data out of this. So if you're a data geek, you can go slice and dice uh, to your heart's content. Um, personally, I don't care as much. Uh, uh, what I tend to really like are data visualizations so I can understand what's going on and I can look for peaks and try and figure out what's going on here, uh, which I believe, for example, this was, uh, you can see the uh, where the spikes get particularly high, the electric floor heat was on. Uh, and then you can tell once the weather got warm, finally the, the hot water uh, heater and the electric floor heat uh, shut off. And you can see that basically there's no hot water use in this building at all, which makes sense. It is the Environmental Studies Department. So the only people that are there are largely uh, the three faculty members and uh, the students. And particularly in the summertime, uh, when there's no classes to speak of, uh, there's really not much usage in that building. Uh, so uh, it, this gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on in a building. And I appreciate that uh, their uh, data export is so good. So if you are looking for data export, the eGage is a nice device to go with. Uh, and hopefully this is all helpful. So just to review, ease of install. Uh, first item, it's going to take a while. App quality, you can see, is pretty good. Um, there is no mobile app, though. This is it. This is a web app. That's all there is. But it is a website that anybody can log into. So if you're looking for transparency, that's good. Uh, odometer and speedometer functions, it does a really nice job, uh, which is what this whole screen is. And there's some more screens behind this, but these, this is really the only screen I ever use. Um, uh, you can export data easily, and reverse polarities are an issue, so you need to pay attention to that at setup, or you will end up with garbage data, which is what we had from this device for upwards of a year before uh, I made a phone call and adjusted it. Um, so hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, again, I'm Nate Adams. If you find this sort of information useful, please subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel. If you want to get notified every time I upload something, click the bell and you'll get that. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask a question. Just comment below. And uh, if you want to see, so I have this... Uh, 
uh, album here. If you want to be able to see this album plus the albums for uh, the Curb and the Sense, uh, there is a download uh, link below where you can get the guide that has links to these things. So uh, if any of that uh, sounds good to you, please do it. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Nate Adams.